Have you ever this? No. But if you open your ears and your eyes, you will see this kind of thing happening. A number of church members are judgmental and hypocritical. And this is one of the cause of dissension in the church, which the Equal Church of Christ almost went very deep. Okay? We have people complaining about others upstairs, and it was becoming such a big thing. Thank God, the wisdom that God so in each and every one of us cool them down. Never mind that these are judging those whom they condemn are judgmental. They say, you know, these people are judging me, but they are judging these people as well. Never mind who is judging who. And they never boycott any place on the basis of hypocrisy except the church. You know, they may go to other places where there is so much judgmental people, there are much hypocrisy, but they never boycott these places. They continue going there. But when it comes to the church, oh, no, no. They will boycott the church. Why? So this is the what reason that they gave why they quit the church or when they come to the church because of persuasion they just sit on the chair and walk the chair and are dating the church. Okay? They don't even listen to what's going on. In my more than 25 years of service to Christ, my personal 25 years, if it's Jane Wick, Jane, uh, this Wayne Jackson is almost 40 years now. I cannot recall having seen a reprobate or an approved person leave the fellowship of the church and take personal responsibility for his own apostasy. I've never heard this, you know, people who leave the church on their own apostasy. They always blame others for leaving the church in my 25 years. They always play the blame game. It is not my fault they did this to me or they did this kind of thing to me or they pushed me out of the church or they throw me out of the church. Such rationalizations are hypocritical camouflage, I call it, or subterfuge on the part of these honest people who refuse to acknowledge their own problems. And this blame syndrome, PVD syndrome, is not new. It came during the creation of man. In the book of Genesis chapter 3, verse 12, if you have the Bible, Genesis chapter 3, verse 12 and 13, this is how far back PTP syndrome came into being. Genesis chapter 3, verse 12. And the man said, The woman whom thou gavest to me, to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. When Adam ate from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, the fruit, he blamed when God asked, What have you done? He blamed the woman. Whom? He said, God, you gave this woman to me, he gave God now. You gave this woman to me, now this woman gave the fruit to me, and I ate of it. And then the Lord, God said unto the woman in verse 13, What is this that thou hast done? What have you done to the man? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did it. Now the woman blamed the serpent. Satan, huh? Blame Satan. But they never blamed it. They never say that, God, I'm so weak, you know, that allow Satan to beguile me, and then I ate of the fruit from this tree of good or evil, even though you told me that whoever eat from this tree will surely die. But they eat. And that is called the blame syndrome. You blame others for your failure. The fifth reason they gave. A small number claim they left the church because they have lost faith in organized religion. They call this an organized religion. So one can suppose these people prefer this organized religion. Because if we do not want organized religion, that means we must like this organized religion. And I can tell you very surely that my uncle said this to me. I do want to be a Christian because it is an organized religion. And I have a reason that I do not want to be part of an organized religion. For whatever had happened to him in the past, which I was told, he looked up to one of the preachers so much that when the preacher betrayed him, he lost faith in everything. 
and he blamed now organizers. We must understand that God does not condone confusion in the church or a disorganized entity. As we are right, we are going to read later on. And one is not allowed to improvise his own worship and service system or pattern. You cannot come to church and improvise your own method of worshiping God, your own system to worship God. You cannot improvise. Now, if you are allowed to improvise, we have nearly 60 people here. There will be 60 different ways to worship God. That is, this organized religion is not organized. But do you think our Lord is happy with that? The answer is definitely no. Such autocratic, self-focused individuals have not the slightest understanding of what genuine Christianity is. They are self-centered. They are very critical of everything that's happening. They always question this, question that. But they do not want to go back to the Bible to confirm what they are hearing. They would like to challenge everyone. So they do not understand what genuine Christianity is all about. In the book of the Bible, 1 Corinthians chapter 14 was the decree. 1 Corinthians chapter 14 was the decree. Which we have uh, studied long time ago. 1 Corinthians chapter 14 was the decree. The Bible reads in this manner. For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all churches of the same. Our God is not an author of confusion. Now, if we have 60 people improvising their own method, there will be 60 confused ways to worship God. And therefore, that is not the church that our Lord wants at all. In John chapter 4, verse 24, turn to the Bible, in John chapter 4, verse 24, why you are not allowed to improvise and create your own system. John chapter 4 verse 24 God is a spirit and they that worship Him must worship in spirit and in truth. What is the meaning of this? John chapter 17 verse 17 can explain to us the meaning as well. John chapter 17 verse 17 The Bible says sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. So if you want to worship God in spirit you have to have your mind set forth on God. And then in truth, the word is truth. To understand God, you must read the scripture and worship God through the understanding of the Bible and through the guidance of the Bible, to the pattern that is set forth in the Bible and not your own improvised system. Therefore, this organized religion is not Christianity. Definitely, the five reasons that I've uh, read up so far is real. But in reality, there are cases where people genuinely lose faith. They really lose their faith. Perhaps they were never grounded or they were disappointed when their expectations of God were more idealistic than informed. Now, this happened. For example, somebody comes to preach to you a different kind of Christianity. This person tells you, you know, when you become a Christian, you don't have to work, you don't have to worry about what you should eat or what you wear. I mean, he's quoting from the Bible also, right? You should not worry. Because why? God is going to put a lot of food on the table miraculously. 